What is up, everyone? Welcome back to the Fantastic Duo Show. I'm here with my boy, Steve Cardenas. Now, really quickly, before we get started, I'm in a totally different location. I'm doing the show remote, guys. So if you see something <laughs> different, it's exactly because of I that. I say, why? Yeah, where are you? Why don't you have the uh, the brick wall behind you, yeah. bro? Come on. <laughs> I'm, I'm, no. I'm, I'm in a new location. But Steve, what's up, man? What's new? Uh, not much, man. You know, uh, it's uh, everything's good, man. Uh, you know, uh, welcome to uh, all the uh, Twitch people uh, that are here in the Twitch verse today. I appreciate you guys coming out. We already got some good chatter going already. I think everybody's pretty excited for today's show. So, um, yeah, it's all been pretty good. I just came back from, uh, you know, from uh, California. Did a little uh, comic book tour over there, comic book store tour over there. It was um, pretty good, man. It was uh, nice to get to see the fans a little bit and let them be able to come interact. Of course, there was all the social distancing and everything, um, which, you know, made it totally safe and everything. But it was still cool. Like, fans got to get that experience of you know talking to me live and getting the autographs and stuff like that. it's a lot of fun so we're going to keep that tour going and this weekend i'll be uh in las vegas at rogue toys i'm gonna do all three three stores of rogue toys and then hop in on saturday night fly in uh, to phoenix and do uh, uh az collector's market as well uh on sunday so uh look for me at both places there guys um a lot of good stuff though man um a couple of quick announcements um, I'm not going to be uh, on the show on Thursday. I'll be traveling, so I, I won't be around. But we've got a really great guest host that's going to join uh, my man Alex over here. Uh, we got uh, Mike Rome uh, from the WWE Monday Night Raw uh, fame. He's going to be, uh, you know, he's going to be uh, taking my place, and uh, he's been a guest on our show before. Uh, very cool guy. So uh, it should be pretty crazy for you we, uh, with you and uh, Mike on there, eh, hey, Alex? I think it should be fun. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I, I mean, listen, I'm a WWE fan as you guys know and i think it, it'll be a good way to kind of also introduce the new show that we're working on into the morphing grid so um oh, okay. you know that cool. always works uh yeah man but so you had nice. your tour and you, and you you know and you're also going to vegas right well yeah that's what i just said i'm, I'm yeah. going to vegas, I'm going yeah, to vegas. Yeah. yeah were you listening <laughs> yeah, no, yeah 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 uh, i'm just, yeah, I'm just no. making sure that everybody all the yes, new people yeah we, yeah, we got a bunch uh, yeah we got I'll a bunch vegas of, this weekend yeah we just vegas had this weekend we just had a whole bunch of new people join on the chat so i just want to make sure oh, that gotcha. everybody, okay, yeah, cool. yeah 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 all right for sure for cool. anyone who just came in um you know just letting them know but yeah man so uh, well, cool cool and uh yeah. one last announcement um we're very excited um you know um on tuesday uh next uh this next tuesday we're gonna have uh mr jason david frank the green ranger aka tommy the green ranger aka the white ranger aka the you know the red turbo ranger red zeo ranger you know black dino thunder ranger man that guy's been like in every episode of power ranger so uh <laughs> we're very stoked to have him on our show as well too so uh, get ready for that uh next tuesday um but you know what alex i tell you man i can't take no more and it ain't no lie I'm super excited about the next guest that we got coming on right now, man. Um, this is a, a buddy of mine. We met on the con circuit, man, and uh, we just hit it off, and we've always been really cool. And uh, I'm super honored that we have him uh, on the show with us today. So, ladies and gentlemen, from uh, from uh, from InSync, ladies and gentlemen, we've got Mr. Chris Kirkpatrick. Yay! Yay! We're bringing him up. You can't hear it, but there's clapping going on on the Twitch uh, <laughs> feed right now, bud. So everybody's cheering for you. And uh, what's up, brother? How you doing? What's up, man? I hear you're, you're clapping and you're screaming. That's enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good enough, right? <laughs> I'm yeah. cheering for you, as always, man. Uh, hey, man, really cool of you to come on here, man. We really appreciate it. And uh, I know you're a super busy guy. And uh, like I said, I appreciate you taking the time, man. But uh, how uh, how's it been, like, in the sense of, like, how you dealing with all the COVID? How are you and your family? Uh, I take it you're, you're in Nashville now, right? Yeah, I'm in Nashville. I got a, well, I got a kid that'll be three in October. Oh geez. So you know that's been that's been kind of fun. It's it's tough telling a little kid that you know they can't go to Chuck E. Cheese or yeah. McDonald's playground or that type of thing. So you know finding ways around or, or ways to entertain because you know for a while even the playgrounds were closed down and right and slowly yeah. open those back up. But you know we keep him entertained here. We get him some random stuff. He's getting into following and watching Power Rangers. Oh funny. yeah! I text you. I keep texting you because you know when he was real little, I had him watching it, and if he'd stay looking at it, I was like, "Oh, he's into it," you know. But yeah. Of course, he got into his Toy Story and other things. Right, uh, dude. That's how it's so funny because, like, you. Sorry, I'm gonna cut you off, but yeah, it was no. like, you know, you you'll send me these little memes, and then you'd be like, "Yo, my son is watching you right now." <laughs> and, and, and it's been probably in the last maybe three weeks or so that he's starting to identify power rangers right he's starting I, to get I who the characters are and stuff you've seen the one about the ooze 
Oh uh, yeah, the movie, yeah. The movie probably six, seven times now, which is like and, Dude. and I've got these things where you can go on and I can find all these old school like TV shows and things like that. Right. There are like fifty billion Power Ranger things. Like I'll watch one and I could be totally lost. I don't know what's going on. They're shooting like pods and <laughs> i don't know what's happening but i'm like man y'all have yeah. so many shows huh it's true yeah i mean I, in the power ranger um like series it's been running for 27 years now and there's over 900 episodes i think so uh it's pretty crazy um and uh like but isn't it crazy though like how even the, like the young kids now are like they're discovering all of it because you can see all those old shows on netflix you know all the old power ranger episodes you can see all of them and uh like the young kids are discovering it on their own you know i'm like wow you know usually a lot of times the parents will introduce them or whatnot but um, you know, the parents you that were realize, fans when they were kids, you know, it's, it's, it's like, it spans, it, it spans the test of time. You know, it's, it really, it's not just, it, it's like, you know, Barney or like these shows that are geared at kids when, when Power Rangers see, cause I found Power Ranger stuff and I don't know if it was, um, Japanese stuff, but I found stuff going back to like, God, the early eighties. Yeah, that's the super like, that's the Super Sentai stuff, which is where yes. the Japanese footage comes from for Power Rangers. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. All right, yeah. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But like you know, even the the older uh, Power Ranger stuff, it it transcends to to all through time. And when it came out, you know, you got to remember in the '90s, early '90s, I was still right 20, 21, 22, whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, man, I got into it so hard because <laughs> I loved all that. I mean, you see, I love Voltron. I love like man. I was gonna say, what is that? I thought it was a Megazord in the background, man. I was like, oh, no, that's Voltron, huh? That's this Voltron. I'm getting oh it. yeah, let's take a look, man. So this was uh, this was a gift to a oh, there goes his leg. <laughs> this, this was a gift to a from a buddy of mine. Oh, bum. crazy because you when I it, it's all Legos. Oh, it's all Legos. It's all Legos. It's all Legos. When oh. I built it, when I built it, you build each individual lion. Oh, really? And then you put them together. And then they tran so you can take them all apart and they transform into the. Oh, which is crazy because it's Lego. I thought actually Fatone got me that. Oh, did he now? <laughs> I think it was at one of the cons or something. He shows up. He goes, "Hey, come down to my room. I got something for you." And oh, like, nice. Hands me this giant box. I'm like, "How am I supposed to get that home, bro?" <laughs> I'm thinking that me and my kid are gonna do it i'm like you know my kid's like probably at the time he was like a year and a half i'm like he's not, he still isn't i mean he's almost three but he does the duplos not the legos legos are still kind of too small for him right 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 yeah for sure but dude that's like uh dude that's cool man yeah because i actually i think back you know like if we kind of like i'm sure people are wondering like maybe kind of how we met um like we met actually we met through the comic cons and I remember, um, I remember meeting you and I thought it was cool, you know, cause I was like, I'm, I'm definitely a fan for sure. You know, that kind of thing. And so, uh, and we, you know, we had kind of hit it off and that was cool, but then I didn't see you for like a couple of months. Then, then, then next thing you know, I see you at another con, but this time you have Joey with you. And then yeah. I, that's how I met both of you guys. And then you're yeah. like, Hey, they, you guys were like, Hey, uh, we're going to go out and hit a, hit a, hit a bar and have a couple of drinks. Are you want to come with? I'm like, uh, hell yeah. <laughs> I'm like, uh, yes. Joey and I ever do. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, anyways man yeah and we ended up having a great time man that was a lot of fun dude so uh yeah. and uh ever since then man yeah we've always been pretty cool so i you know I, I, that was that was nice you know one of the good things that i like about comic cons is you know that people that you might not necessarily get to meet you know like, or, like your peers in a sense like you get to kind of you know come together in this random weird thing in this random weird city and you know it's like it's kind of like you're stuck on a cruise ship together so you may as well make the yeah. most of it and you end up making some good friends you know what i mean so well, it's kind of like cool like they kind of talk about weird like i mean where else do you go that you're like hanging out with like ralph macchio and uh you know uh what's game of name? thrones and game sands of anarchy yeah, and yeah. all these and everybody usually goes out afterwards or finds mm -hmm. a spot to you know kind of hang out and like you're sitting there you know that one night when i was with uh when, i think in uh lexington i think was it lexington no it wasn't lexington it was um in tennessee it was knoxville Oh, Knoxville. Yes. That was the time that we were, yeah, it was the time that we yeah. were together in Knoxville. Yeah. yeah that so was a good go, one too. We go out in Knoxville and we met up with, um, Ralph Macchio and, uh, Billy Zabka. 
Yep. Mm -hmm. From uh, from the Karate, Karate Kid, Kid, man. My favorite movie, man. <laughs> oh, what, a, what a great movie. I know, well, right? I just, so you were I, fangirling too, huh? Oh, big time. Big time. Yeah. Well, Ralph and I have the same uh, agent. So oh, okay. Gotcha. I see him a lot at the, at the different things. But Billy, I was just like, dude, it's so cool. And especially with the new Cobra Kai. Man, yes, that thing's awesome. New... What a difference. Like, I know, right? I like I mean, how it, they it... flipped it around and now Johnny's like the you know, the underdog guy that's just getting, you know, beat up all, or just, you know, having all the stuff. And Ralph's got the, well, not Ralph, I guess it's Danny, right? Yeah. Daniel LaRusso. Daniel yeah. LaRusso. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's I think arguably. it's great. What a great spin. What a great way to like, to show a continuation of, 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 yeah, a, of sure. a story that you're familiar with, you know? Um, so I just thought it was brilliant and was long overdue too, in my opinion. So uh, yeah. I'm super but, stoked on that Cobra Kai series. Yeah. You don't think of, you know, you would think they would try to do what a lot of other sh shows do and just try to keep that same story going and Daniel still, but it's like, I like the way they flipped it up and you know, you really empathize for Johnny like the whole time. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, you do. You, 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 it, it is. You kind of start to see his side of the story. Alex, did you ever, did you watch the Cobra Kai series at all? You know what? Not yet. I, I, oh, I hear you okay. talk about it so much. I got to get on top of that. Dude, well, first of all, you gotta watch the first Karate Kid movie once. I've wa I've watched the Karate Kid movie. Yeah, right. yeah. Okay. Cool. So you got and that part. You can watch part. the second one for fun. But... Yeah, you can watch the second one. <laughs> I, I watched the second one just for the beginning part of it when you know, like Mr. Miyagi, like punch, you know, like takes the oh, yeah. down every punches holes through the, punches holes through the windows. And um, the, music, the music's good in the second one. Yeah. All right. And uh, but anyways, but the with the Cobra Kai series, it's on YouTube, right? It's on, they watch it on YouTube Red or something, right? Yeah, YouTube yeah. Red. That's what it is. Yeah, if you get the chance, man, watch it. There's like two seasons, two full seasons. You could totally binge watch it, bro. And then you'll know what the hell we're talking about. You know, I'm all over it. I'm all over <laughs> it. Trust me. We got to convert. We got to convert. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to get myself back into the Karate Kid mode. <laughs> you know. That's cool, man. Good stuff. So, um, you know, I think, uh, bro, um, you know, I, I, I mean, I've known you for you know a few years now, and uh, I still don't even really know. Like, I mean, I know this is a story you probably told a billion times, but like, can could could you tell us and the fans like kind of like how did it all get started for you? Because you're from Orlando, right? Now, yeah, are you yeah, from I'm there originally? Like, okay. Yeah. Like, so I moved. I moved to Orlando. I'm a lot older than I look. I'm like 62, but um, <laughs> I'm not quite 62. But I'm old. But I moved to Orlando in 1990 uh -huh. and oh. started uh, school down there. Okay. And while I was in school, I was doing all these quartets, and you know, I always loved just you know four or five part harmony stuff. So when I was in high school, I was doing it. So when I moved to Orlando, uh, I ended up falling into the choir somehow and met a couple guys there was only like a couple guys in the choir we went on a trip and it was the four of us and i was like dude let's we've got four parts here let's do the parts so you know me and these other guys would start doing all the parts and i was like start playing coffee shops and all this stuff and just started building and building one of the guys that was in my quartet ended up leaving the quartet and he went and joined uh up with lou and he met lou and Lou, uh, I don't. I guess he tried out and got into the Backstreet Boys. So, right, okay. Yes, yeah, so he was in the Backstreet Boys, and then I think he had a problem with the, one of the producers or something like that. I'm not sure the exact. I don't want to speak for him, but yeah, right. Uh, I just, I just know that he ended up leaving that group, and then called me up and said, "Hey, do you still have those? Are you still doing the quartet thing? Because I, I know this guy Lou that's looking for another band, and uh, he'd be interested. So, you know, he basically made the intro to Lou." And then this guy, uh, Charlie, that made the intro um, went off and he was actually a golfer, too. So he went off to teach golf in Club Med. So kind of left me in Orlando. And that's when I just started, you know, putting guys together. I had different groups. Guys would quit. And it's funny. I do a Monday night. Uh, I don't know what you call it. It's like a it's like a trivia thing. But, you know, basically on my Instagram, I just. It, it's mostly for the fans and, and mostly to keep people entertained and I'll have, you know, guests on and mm -hmm. we've only done music so far. Cause that's, that's why you haven't gotten a call from me yet, but. Oh, okay. <laughs> just the music guys, at least so far. And All right. um, well, when you're ready to change it over to pop culture stuff, man, like, you know, you're I'm first, definitely you're your guy. <laughs> Maybe boy, I'll yes. get, I'll get Mr. Belding. We'll get, we'll have a whole little, uh, 90s throwback nice dude that sounds great actually yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so oh sorry so go I, ahead you no know, so then basically um uh guys would quit and come back and uh, oh what i was gonna say was one of the guys i had on uh when i did the show last night was a dear friend of mine brody who was in this band called c-note 
but he was actually in my band when I'd met Lou. I brought him and Raul from Sino into my band. And then, you know, over time and over, um, you know, all this energy put into it and wasn't going anywhere, they would drop out until finally, you know, I called around and found Justin and Justin brought in JC and me, Justin and JC were out, you know, talking about what we were going to do with the group and everything. And we bumped into Joey randomly mm -hmm. and they knew Joey from the Mickey Mouse Club. And I knew Joey from working at Universal Studios. Right. Okay. So we brought Joey in and we were a band for about, I want to say about a year and a half, maybe. Oh, okay. And uh, we had another kid in the band named Jason. Mm -hmm. And funny enough, that's how we got the name in sync because Justin's mom was doing all this weird word play and everything. And she's like, when Jason was in the band, they said, she said, the last letter of all of your first names spells in sync. So we were like, all right, we'll go with that. That works. But then Jason quit. So then we were only in sick, <laughs> which was uh, not a working title. And then um, about a year and a half later, we found Lance and did a show three weeks later, uh, about maybe two months after that a german record label wanted to sign us we went to germany and then we came to the states oh wow dude see i had no idea about all that i didn't realize that you guys were like actually like together like that long and like out right. there trying to like make it work before you even got signed to like an out of country uh label um that, that's I, wow. the funny thing about all those things is you know they always talk about overnight success stories and they're never overnight success stories right yeah you know there's there's a lot of work i mean we we worked, we were, we were together for about a year and a half, maybe pushing two years before we even got that first deal. And that first deal was Germany. So right. we were over in Germany, you know, doing shows. We had no idea what anybody was saying on the show, but I'll tell you those the German fans were loyal. And even to this day, they are amazing. And we hadn't been back there and, and I probably haven't been there in 20 years or so. And I definitely miss it and feel bad that, they were the ones that really started us. But once it right. took off in the States, it just took off. Yeah, of course, man. I mean, yeah, you, you gotta, you gotta, you know, just serve the demand, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's crazy, man. See, this is like the stuff I didn't know, you know what I mean? Like, so you, you know, kind of in this quartet and you, you had, obviously, I guess you had aspirations to become, I don't know if you had aspirations necessarily to become like, like a pop group or a pop, a pop star or anything, or I don't know if that was in the, you were hoping that would be in the cards for you, or if you were just, you know, wanted some kind of a career in music. I mean, how, like, what was I, your I was, I was motivation? I was a songwriter. Oh, like, okay. I was playing, I was playing shows just random, you know, at little coffee shops or whatever I could get. And right. I think I made one check doing that for like 75 bucks. And I thought I was <laughs> going to be in there. And you're like, yes, finally we can retire. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, no worries for the rest of my life. But yeah, I was, right. I mean, I, I it, it's, it's weird now, you know, that how it, how boy bands and stuff just get a bad stigma to them that it's not, you know, I, I think basically is because, you know, boy bands are young, five young guys that get up there. So who's going to be their fan base girls, you know, and, you know, right. growing up, it was the new kids with me. Yeah. And I was mm -hmm. like, ah, the new kids on the block, whatever, you know, I'm not going to be in, you know, one of right. those bands or something like that. And yeah. lo and behold, I'm in one just like them. Yeah, but you, I mean, but you know, the thing is, it's like, you know, I mean, first of all, whatever, there's always going to be haters or whatnot, you know, but you guys develop this, this thing. And then of course, everything sort of like goes in a cycle, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you, you hit this wave and then it kind of, you know, kind of goes down, but then it's cyclical. It comes back around again. And dude, like everybody now, like, you know, uh, even like, like my Power Ranger buddies, man, when we're out at like other conventions and stuff and we hang out over the after parties or whatever, and they got lip sync battles, what do they do? They're always up there like doing that, yeah. doing that i'm doing it you know so i mean it's like this this is this is what everybody loves you know what i mean like it, you know like it's the same thing with power rangers too you know it's like oh the nostalgia comes back and that's what you want you know and uh you know, that's, and that's it's funny you just said that because i totally forgot what we had when we filmed our very very first music video it was for uh i want you back and it was a european version of it so the one that we have in the states we had to refilm because it was basically like you exactly where you are right now in front of a green screen. Right. You know, and they just put up all this space stuff and everything like that. And while we were there um, filming it, 
Danny Wood came with uh, one of the original Power Rangers. And I don't remember his name, but he was definitely one of the the originals. And we were freaking out. And where was this? That Where was this at? In Orlando. Was it, it was in Orlando. Oh, okay. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, this is probably, was this, uh, uh, what, do you remember what year this was? Was it like 94? This would have been, yeah, probably 94, nine, no, 95, probably. Ni oh, 95. You know what? What was probably happening was we were probably doing the tour of the of the Power Ranger movie at that time because that, that came out in, in 95. And if we were in other cities like that, like if we were in Zach Atlanta. Taylor. Oh, That's Zach. It. Oh, the Black Ranger. The, the yep. Black Ranger. Okay, cool. So, yeah, that actually was probably 93 or 94 because uh, yeah. around, around 94 is when he left the show – and a whole new crop came in, uh, not a new crop, but a, a, a three new people, including myself, came mm -hmm. in to take some places of some of the original group. Um, so, yeah, it must have been like around 93 or maybe early 94 that that happened. Probably 94, I think. It was yeah, there. okay. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I'm sure everybody's freaking out. Everybody loves the Black Ranger, man. Um, <laughs> Dude, and it's just crazy. Like, He's at our freaking video shoot. This yeah. is as good as it gets. <laughs> check for 75 bucks playing music and now with the black ranger this is awesome so cool man yeah he's actually a, quite a good dancer himself too he's like world class man no kidding um, yeah yeah he's uh, i mean that's like one of the that was one of his things like um and on the show he had what he called hip-hop keto that was his that was his moves you know for the, oh, for the nice. show. and uh i mean he's a yeah, he's a phenomenal dancer and even like world-class salsa dancer like uh, I mean, he's phenomenal. You could even. Why has he been on Dancing with the Stars? I, I have no idea, man. I think maybe because he's too. Maybe because he's too good, man. They maybe they won't let him on. <laughs> like, Is that why you, they had Joey and Lance on then? I, I well, <laughs> yeah, I have no idea, man. I don't know, but I will say this: if you would Google type type, you know, um, Walter Jones salsa champion, just Google that. Walter Jones is his real name, the Black Ranger. Walter Jones, salsa champion. If you just Google, I mean, not Google, but YouTube that and watch his performance, you are gonna like be like, "Wow, like that is crazy what this kid can do." So uh, anyway, like it, capoeira it's, type type stuff. Yeah, I mean, like, with, but salsa though. It's a salsa. Yeah. It was a salsa routine, but he did flips in it and like all kind of crazy acrobatics and stuff. It was insane. Um, yeah, so he's he's really good, and I always enjoy watching him dance. But uh, sorry, we went off on a big tangent. What were we talking about? Always <laughs> go off on tangents. Yeah, I know, right? I was just uh, talking, that was just the first time we shot that video. I just remember. Oh, that. right. Okay, yeah. So you, your first introduction to Rangers, and you, you yeah, know, after you'd first. seen them on TV, yeah. Well, yeah. that was that was what that was for me too. You know, uh, uh, I know Alex will tell you because we talk about this a lot. You know, but I used to watch the show. I was familiar with it, and uh -huh. I used to kind of watch them do their fight scenes and stuff. And I was like, kind of just in joking, man, like you know. I could do that. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? Like never knowing that I'd actually get the chance because, you know, um, I didn't really have the aspirations. I just heard about an audition and went to it kind of thing. So it just yeah. sort of like fell into my lap. Um, but that was crazy. So, uh, yeah, man, that's good. Good stuff. So, um, like before, uh, you were, you were talking about, like you were saying you, you had your show last night. Um, that is that the pop syndicate? Is that what that's called? Yeah. It's, it's just basically a pop trivia thing. And, you know, like okay, I, said, cool. I just, I just go on, I started it like the first week that probably maybe in March. Okay. You know? And now that's, that's, that's Instagram live, right? You're doing that on IG live. Yeah. It's on my Instagram live. Okay. And, cool. and I was just trying to do something because, you know, it's, it's, it's really hard on, you know, it's hard on everybody. You know, I'm not going to play woe is me, but it's hard on everybody, but you know, the music business, you know, they're talking about uh, shows now starting in 2022. Oh, you know, wow. which, is, which is weird to even say the date 2022. I know. You know it feels like it feels like future. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And all like... these, you know, there's so many gigs, you know, I still go out and play and, you know, host shows and everything. But that'll all be, you know, this, you know, it'll be it'll be on um, basically on video now. It's it's not you can't gather, you know, I mean, even here when they have in Nashville, they'll have they'll reopen the bars for a minute. But when they open the bars, they're like. But no live music and no dancing. Like it sounds like something out of Footloose or something, where it's like, <laughs> yeah. we'll open the bar, but no dancing. If we see anybody dancing, you know, you're gone. And it's just kind of, you know, we're all in obviously in a state of what next and kind of trying to scrap and see, you know, what we can do. But as a musician, we still can make music, you know. So right. sure. we've got that going for us. 
Yeah, I mean, and and you know, and I guess you know, like I said, I mean, that's the whole reason I started this this podcast too was just a way to kind of keep staying connected with the fans. You know what I mean? Because yeah. we have to we have to keep ourselves relevant too. You know, um, so uh, you know, and 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 you know, the fans, you know, they're all going through the same thing too. So any way we can mm-hmm. reach out to them and they can reach out with us and keep some kind of connection going is good you know what i mean yeah. at least that's, at least that's yeah. how i feel the real why kind of why i started it with alex here i know alex poor alex man we've left him like out of the whole conversation man <laughs> i I'm like, sorry we had a bit we had a lot of catching up to do uh but i know uh alex has little ones and uh i know that uh his little one probably watches the fairly odd parents and i know he's wanting to ask you about that and so maybe i'll turn that over to him uh and maybe you can kind of get into the the realm of how you started making the transition from you know, doing like the the music and stuff, and how you got into like all your voiceover stuff as well too. So let me take it away, Alex, if you want to. Yeah, ask sure, Chris. That. So like, you know, you obviously had major success in all of the music stuff that you've done in the past, and you were like, you know, you guys were it, like just like the Power Rangers. I think you guys went hand in hand, a, mm-hmm. a worldwide phenomenon. Um, I'm pretty sure to transition from the that big of a stage, right, and calm things down a little bit, and and do the voiceover. Uh, voiceovers how did you how did you happen to just like make that happen that transition over to okay now I'm just gonna be behind uh, a microphone in a studio and you know I'm no longer gonna be out in in in, on, in front of the uh, the world basically well so how how that actually came about was you know we do a lot of you know you, you got to remember at the time late 90s uh, Cartoon Network was doing like cow and chicken Powerpuff Girls Johnny Bravo. I'm a big, I'm a nerd when it comes to like cartoons, uh, 70s, 80s TV shows and bad sci-fi movies. Like that's all, that's why, you know, that's why Power Rangers to me, you know, and and no disrespect. It's it's right in your wheelhouse. But it was like, I was like, this is exactly, you know, what I love. Cause obviously Voltron is, is um, one of my favorites. But uh, yeah, so we were uh, we were meeting with some Cartoon Network people, and there was some Nickelodeon people, and the Nickelodeon people were like, you know, I, I we sat in a room, and basically I, we were at a hotel in L.A. somewhere, and I went into like the conference room with a couple of them, and I was just like spitting all my knowledge. I was just like, you know, talking about all these shows, and you know what a diehard, you know, just cartoon old school, right? You know, weird sci-fi anything type show i am and while we were talking about it they're like man you're you know you know your stuff when it comes to this stuff and they're like well we're starting this new um cartoon and it's we're called they're calling it the fairly odd parents and you know they explain the concept and everything and they're like and we would you be interested in like being a voice on it and come in and basically as yourself you know do this whole pop kind of thing idea and i was like you mean like jet screamer and they were like, yeah, exactly like Jet Screamer. Uh, so and I don't know if you know, but Jet Screamer was from the Jetsons. He was this, uh, he was like the rock guy that would come out, Judy, 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 and he played like <laughs> played love songs. I think he might have been on like maybe two episodes of the Jetsons or something. So I was All like, right. Yeah, that's that's like, super uh, esoteric right there, but <laughs> yeah. So I was are you kidding me? I'm like, this is exactly exactly what I would love to do. So it wasn't really a transition because we were still traveling, touring, sure. mm-hmm. you know, doing everything. It just became another side project that I right. did. And, you know, something that, first of all, I'd, I'd never really acted before. And second of all, you know, voice acting is r- really difficult. Uh, Steve, I'm sure, have you, uh, have you done any voice acting? We've done, I or? mean, well, even for even for our, our show, I mean, I remember a lot of it was helmeted. So we right. had to go in and do all that ADR. And oh, right. yeah, I mean, we did, I mean, we did hours and hours of ADR every single week for, for, for every episode. So, you know, when, when, very, when yeah, it's very going familiar. on and you're, you're, you're not in it, you're sitting in a, in a vocal booth basically. And, and trying to act, you know, you have to be an actor and, and act this scene out. It was really difficult because, um, even, uh, gray, do you know, gray, uh, gray Deloise or gray. She played uh she played Nikki or Vicky, Vicky on the Fairly Odd Parent show. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I did a Comic Con um she's last year, I don't remember where it was. And that's the first time I'd met her. 
So even yeah. though you guys were in epi- all the episodes together, all these episodes, everything's all recorded separately. Right, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was like, and and now I'm I follow her, and she is absolutely amazing. Like I I, she's hilarious. She's, she's beautiful. <laughs> she's she's the whole package. She's amazing. But uh, yeah. So it's you know you're you're acting and trying to do this, and I did one, and then another thing I didn't really understand was after I recorded it, you know I was like, hey, okay, is it out yet? Like a year later, I'm like, hey, is it out yet? And they're like, no, it's probably won't be out till next year. And I'm like, that was a year ago. <laughs> right. It took a long time. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, with anim- with animating, it, it, I'm sure it probably takes even longer. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Cause... And I didn't even know how that process went. Like, I was like, do you draw it? And then I act it out. And they're like, no, no, you say it and we draw it. So it was really, you know, it was it was an amazing, amazing experience. After yeah. I did that, they started going, well, we've got another episode for you and another episode, another episode. So I was in a bunch of the episodes and, you know, we got to do music on it and there's songs and, you know, funny thing, we're talking about like these cons and stuff. It still is, is hilarious that like I see these kids and, you know, 20 years ago, those kids were the ones that were screaming and going crazy. Mm-hmm. And now they come with their moms <laughs> the moms are going hey hey this, i want you to take a picture and the kids are freaking like i don't know this guy like <laughs> you know, leave me alone but but then the kids you'll be like yeah well he also does chip skylark and they're like what oh right you right right chip skylark like and i'm like yeah but i was in a band i don't know if you know i was in a they're like no we don't care about the band you were Dude. chip skylark mm-hmm. <laughs> so it actually became something really cool and you know, Butch Hartman. Yeah, you, you know, found a way to job. you found a way to bridge the gaps. You know what I mean? Yeah. Between yeah, that's great, yeah, man. Exactly. So I kind of like Kiss, except cartoon style. Right. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, so it, it was just kind of happenstance that it, that it happened because it was like it wasn't like a something that they like, you know, like a, a like intended to approach you on. It was like you kind of just met them randomly, and then and then that's how it kind of came yeah, out. Yeah, just had to spark the conversation of how much I like the. Yeah, you know, it's cartoons so cool. and that See? type of stuff, and that kind of that's that's what kind of sucks about like not living in LA though, you know, because when you're in LA, that stuff happens all the time. You know, you're yeah. always around all those people, and you know, you just don't you you don't get. I mean, here I love Nashville, and yeah. I would definitely stay here because I love the music scene. I love of course. The people. I love the the city, everything about it. But you know, just when you're there every day, somebody's like. Hey, you know, I've been working on this thing, you know, why don't you try out? And, and I like to just do. You know? Yeah, right. I'm exactly. down for having fun and trying new stuff. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, I you know, I kind of like moved to moved uh, away from L.A. into Dal- into Dallas. Like it's been a little over a year now. And you're right. Yeah. I mean, you kind of forget that that's a, a, a part of, you know, being out and about in L.A. You kind of always run into people. And you always sort of just make those weird little connections sometimes that you definitely don't really get out here or necessarily or in Nashville either, you know, mm-hmm. maybe more so a little bit more music wise, but as far as like Hollywood stuff, not as much. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Interesting. Um, I don't know. I, I, I think probably Alex, like Alex probably had more stuff that he was going to ask you. And hey, listen, we just you, keep, guys, like, cutting you, them up. you guys are pretty much talking. And this is, again, <laughs> this is, you know, uh, Chris, I tell this to Steve all the time. You know, he, he, he has a lot of friends in the industry like yourself. You know, a lot of people that, you know, I'm in my mid thirties that I happen to just watch and, and imitate. I imitated him learning karate <laughs> moves. I imitated you learning how to sing. <laughs> you know, so so all of that stuff like that, just, just you know, I like hearing the stories. But I do have a question. It, um, after you 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 transitioned to the uh, the whole world of, of uh, cartoons and stuff like that, did you um what what started you? Did you want to start your own group or anything after NSYNC? Is there any like your music? Where did you want to take it? Like where did you go? Like you know that is that was such a big um, part of the identity of who you were, right? And yeah. what and what you took with you everywhere. So how do you how do you separate that without it being something where like you just don't want to talk about it anymore, but it's still a big part of your life. No, uh, funny enough, it's it's very you know Power Rangers like, you know to me, you know the band was the product of the five individuals. You know it was mm-hmm. it was the collective together. Now there were, you know, I mean Justin is Justin, and, and he always had that talent. JC is JC. He's always had that talent, but you know my talent was I sang really high and you know could sing every harmony or every part so you know you can't you can't come out and do a record as a guy that does harmonies you know it it was so it was kind of tough it was it was tough finding a place and 
you know, I've, I've still done a lot of writing and producing and, you know, I'm still in the studio, but as for, you know, I've got, you know, little records, you know, I, I did, I've got a band with, with a really great friend of mine, Mike Bosch and, um, you know, him and I worked a long time together with, um, you know, producing um, other people's records, writing our own music. Uh, the, the best thing was transitioning out of the band. I knew that it wasn't going to be the Chris, a Chris Kirkpatrick show type thing. You know, I knew it was going to be, you know, I would do writing music or, you know, perform with people or whatever. And, you know, it became something that I really loved, like sitting in the studio, you know, Mike and I would sit in there for, you know, days and days and, and write and produce. And mm-hmm. every morning I had a studio in my house. So every morning I'd come down and Mike would drive over and we'd sit down there. And one day we're doing like a Ford, you know, commercial. One day we're doing, um, <laughs> producing a, some hip hop band, right, some right. new country artists. So it was really, you know, it took that nine to five to like a new level of enjoyment because I knew I couldn't come into a desk every day and, you know, stamp papers or, or do whatever. I, I love the fact that I'd go down and I'd be like, okay, Mike, I've got this today. Or he'd come in and be like, all right, we've got this today. This is what we're going to work on. And, and right. you explore your, you know, just, just what you know in, in, in the yeah. genres of music and really kind of learn, you know, I, I really learned more than I did, you know, right. so That's we really did a cool, lot, yeah. but the whole process of learning it was, was amazing. For yeah. Sure. And, I, and I don't think people truly like understand and like, um, you know, like if, if you love music or whatever, or, and unless you're a musician, you don't really understand like how, uh, integral like the 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 producer is to the sound and the music right. and, and, and 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 you know putting that all together i mean they're the real genius like behind the all the music that you hear and you know so to to be doing that you know i think it's probably like the, probably the most important part of it wouldn't you think when you agree on that or me or yeah oh yeah yeah uh, chris, yeah chris sorry yeah yeah um yeah i mean that's you know, it's always, there's uh, somebody that was really important to us though, uh, was this uh, lady, Robin Wiley. Mm-hmm. And uh, she was our vocal coach. And that was because she wasn't just a vocal coach. She was, she lived in Nashville and she was a writer, a composer, an arranger, um, all these things. And, you know, she's the one that said, you know, when we were singing and stuff, you know what, why don't you two switch parts here or, And she would find like, we had a record um, called I Thought She Knew, which if you ask any of the guys, the the best, the the most, our favorite record that we've ever cut was this record that she wrote and we did it acapella. And it was just, I mean, five part harmonies the whole way through and just the, the key changes and the chord changes and the progressions were just so unbelievable. But that's what, you know, so with her, with us, it was a vocal coach as well as, producers like you know of course max martin um rami all these guys that you know uh we actually worked with richard marks and you know people like that oh, who cool, are just man. amazing amazing musicians you know just right. not just not just you know richard marks is a great singer songwriter but he's an amazing artist like yeah. you know, he writes and 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 what he does is just like you know we just sit there in awe of it so it's it's real important to your sound and to what you're doing um the 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 uh, producer for sure yeah 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 i can i definitely could imagine that well that's cool man i mean it, I, I think it's i think it's sort of just like the natural evolution i would imagine for for somebody like yourself who's like behind the mic to get behind the board you know what i mean like and just eventually you know um but i i, I like that that you you feel like the person that was your vocal coach almost goes like a, also like a producer as well um, I think that that uh, that's that's pretty cool because so, it wasn't necessarily like, you know, what you were expecting, you know, because you would kind of expect that from the producer and not necessarily from your from that vocal coach. But that's right. that's dope, man. Yeah. yeah. So here here's another question. I got a couple. I'll show you people are going crazy on the chat. On <laughs> oh, yeah. We're like, we, we've yeah. been ignoring all the people that have probably been no, asking no. questions like crazy. Let's hit some of the what some of the fans been yeah, saying. Yeah, for sure. So um, here's here's two questions. Here's one that I wanted to ask and then I'm going to just. Um, if you, you, you mentioned before that the whole like Power Rangers and NSYNC thing kind of like went hand in hand. If you it's were a good analogy. Power, yeah, if you were a Power Ranger, which one would you be? <laughs> oh, come on. You know what I got to say there. I got to say Red Ranger, baby. 
Yeah, right, right. That's cool. He's doing that because I'm on the show. When next week, next week when he's on, you know, one of the other no. Ranger shows, he's gonna say no. that going. No. <laughs> no, before a couple years ago, I would have said Black Ranger. Nice. But, uh, I definitely. I that's mean, cool. It, I don't mind I, bias at all, man. It's cool. I appreciate I think, that. <laughs> that's what's cool about the Rangers, though, too. When you watch, it's like, you know, there's always there's something about all you guys, you know. And again, you can kind of uh, assimilate it to us. There's something. We're yeah. all different, you know. We're all we very all diverse person personality, and you know, it was it was very interesting. Interesting. Now, your rollerblading skills, on <laughs> on the other hand, I don't know about. You know, I think I was a better rollerblader than you, but well, there's absolutely no question about it that you're a better rollerblader than me because I don't rollerblade those at all. Stunt doubles? Were those oh stunt doubles? my god! Of course, it was a stunt you double. Jump out of a plane and then just jump on rollerblades and yeah i mean well you know and that's cool i mean the action the action pack throughout the whole movie was cool but like what the thing is i didn't know how to do half that stuff you know um you know they had to give us lessons on how to do some of it and i'm like there's no way i'm gonna be able to skate downstairs backwards you know that that ain't happening so yeah. you know they ended up like getting getting doubles that look like us to do that stuff and uh, i know as disappointing as that sounds but you know, I mean, no, that just, that just you, solidifies that I'm a better rollerblader. Yeah, yeah. one thousand yeah. percent, dude. I say <laughs> everybody's a better, so everyone's a better rollerblader than me, like hands down. You know. Um, uh, <laughs> here's a question I have from the from the uh, from the chat that I continue seeing over and over again is, if you ever were to, I mean, you know, never say never, but if you ever to reunite and do any kind of tour. Would you ever consider doing something with, uh, like, the Backstreet Boys or anything like that where you guys do it together? I know Backstreet Boys just had one with um, uh, New, Kids on, New Kids on the Block, right? New Kids, yeah. Yeah, so would it be something that, like, um, would it ever be possible in any time, anything like that? Like, I, I'm pretty sure you've heard that question a million times. Yeah, yeah I mean, probably... there's, there's, you know, obviously there's, there's nothing happening. And, um, you know, there's been a lot of different talks about, different things but you know i think um i think we wouldn't leave anything off the table you know there's there's always you, you never know and and you know the backstreet boys are a band that i love to make fun of and i love to talk shit about but i love them you know right. it's like yeah it's like they're they're great guys they're they're a great band but it's just you know in our nature that we we have to talk shit and just kind of you know, yeah, I'm gonna, uh, which act, in actuality, though, the crazy thing is the rivalry was really the fans. Yeah, like, of course. Like, you know, all the time um, I've always been uh, Howie and I went to school together. So I've known Howie longer than I've known, you know, all all the guys in my band, basically. And so, you know, Howie's one of the sweetest guys on the planet. Um, I've always been friends with Nick. Uh, AJ and I had a little beef for a little while, but it was stupid beef. And you know, now, <laughs> now AJ is one of my, you know, best friends on the planet. I love that kid too. So even like 90 degrees, we love all those guys. There was never, there was never really any animosity. There was always competition, you right. know, so you, you know, you look at it as two football teams where you see the guys, you know, talking trash to each other on the field and whatever, whatever. But afterwards, they go up. Hey, man, good game, good game. Because it was there was competition, but it wasn't it wasn't personal. It wasn't ever, you know, anything that we ever you know really disliked right. anybody for. So except you know, all for one, <laughs> all for one. No, we went on tour with those. I'm guys. kidding, man. I'm I love those guys. Like, what about Old Town? <laughs> yeah, no, O Town, O Town. I'm actually really good friends with all of O Town. Get out of here! Wow. I don't think. Um, there was some weird beef kind of with, have you ever heard of the band Five? Yes. Yeah. They were like a UK band. You'll hear about them in a little while, buddy. Oh, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, for whatever reason, I'm just saying. Um, but, uh, you know, they they were kind of snotty. We did a tour with them in the UK and we were with the 98 Degrees as well. And they were just kind of like, you know, forget these American bands that are on this, whatever. All right. I'm like, yeah. You know, whatever, dude. I was like, you shouldn't be talking. You can talk shit to us all you want, but I'm gonna be talking about 98 degrees. I was like, those guys can bench dump trucks. Like, it's yeah, like, right, <laughs> yeah, right, those exactly. Are, those are some tough, <laughs> tough mofos right there. Yeah, right, that. exactly. <laughs> yeah, and also, I also wanted to ask you about Gone Country. Uh, you uh -huh. were on, you were on that. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. That was actually a precursor to me moving to Nashville. I mean, it, it was kind of funny because I did it here, and I did that like. Whew, 12 maybe 12 years ago and when i was here for it i was like man nashville is a cool town i was like but i couldn't live here i'm like there's no way i could live here and then 
about four years ago, my wife and I were like, let's get out of Orlando. Let's move. She's like, where? I'm like, let's move to Nashville. I was like, I can work there. You know, she can find work here. It'll be perfect. And, you know, never look back. And it's been an amazing thing, but it was a cool introduction because I used to come up to Nashville and write, but you know, it was different because I didn't really, I'd go out a little bit here and there, but it was mostly writing the entire time. Whereas when, when I did the show, you know, I made a lot of really cool friends from Nashville and a lot of uh, great people here that I still keep in touch with. And, you know, I got to a lot of, I get to do a lot of country stuff that now I do every day. Nice, man. That's awesome, man. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Steve. I, no, I, I, no, I, I not you were at all. Say something. I'm like, oh, no, wait. I, I uh, no, actually, I, I, I was kind of wondering because I know some of the fans are probably asking about this too. In there, in, 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 in there, it's like maybe, uh, maybe give us like one, one funny, like one funny story or one funny like, anecdote from like when you guys were on tour and stuff like yeah. that. You know, because you I mean obviously going around all these different, you know, being these young 21, 22 year old guys, you know, bouncing around all these places all around the world and all around the country and just like getting like massive you know adoration from everyone you know everywhere you went and all the parties and stuff after i'm sure there's got to be some funny some funny shit that happened you know maybe you could tell us one little funny story if you can anything pops to your head yeah i think a ton of it was mostly in europe you know i mean it was oh okay especially at that time there was you know i was here i was like 23 years old Mm -hmm. joey was like maybe i was 24 joey was like 20 21 and you know, um, Justin was only, if I was 24, 25, Justin would have been 14, maybe. Oh, okay. Or so, so, and Lance would have been 16 and, and JC would have just been old enough too. But, wow. you know, it was really, uh, when we'd go over there, I know there was probably, I probably never slept. Like I probably went like eight months without sleeping because we would do, you know, when in Rome, literally. <laughs> yeah. 6 a.m. 6 a.m. interviews till noon, take quick lunch break from like one to like five. You do photo shoots. Then you'd have a show at seven or a radio show. Then you'd go do radio promo after that. Meet with the label at the hotel. And then, you they, you know, we'd get done with dinner at like 10, 30, 11 o'clock. And, you know, first time in Europe or first time being over there, Joey and I are like, let's go. Like, let's figure out what's going on. Grab a security guard. Exactly. Go to a club, go party and party till five o'clock in the morning, wake up at six and do it all over again. (laughs) Like, you know, there were, there were some, there were some times, but luckily I was young today. There is no way. No way you could do that. Yeah. Mm -mm. And how I could do that. But then, you know, it was, we'd pop back up like nothing was wrong. And I've I've done shows with hangovers. I've done shows (laughs) like you know, miserable, but it was fun. And and it was, I got to do here. I was performing, you know, for a living, but funny stories would probably, I mean, there was everything you see it from, you know, kids, like they would chase you. Like we'd be in our vans and they would just chase you. And we saw one kid, we saw one kid on a bike. And I think he was like riding next to us. He went to ride a wheelie and his front tire just kept going. And he was up in the air with like no front tire, just <laughs> um, smacked. And and you'd see girls that were running after you, and they're just watching you, so they'd be hitting cars or hitting. Street oh right, not or, paying attention to their surroundings. Not paying attention where they're going. <laughs> yeah. And uh, but girls would sneak on like the luggage, the conveyor belts in the airports, or <laughs> hide in the hotel rooms. And <laughs> to this day, I still when I walk into a hotel room, I. I always go in and just check the curtain. I mean, I know there's nothing there, but just right. psychologically. Just a little force of habit, yeah. Just in case something happens. So it was, Dude. you know, it was mostly weird stuff like that. Yeah, you know, well, that's, that we never we, we never got that because all of our fans were like little kids, you know what I mean? If, yeah. we ever, if we ever saw them face-to-face, they'd be like hiding behind their mom's skirt, you know what I mean? Right, like, right, right. It's this different dynamic, you know what I mean? And so it was, there was nobody hiding behind my curtains, you know? <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is always weird, though, to see that, like, especially at the time, you know, when you're on top of the world or something and, you know, I'd be out doing something and you'd turn a corner and run into a, a kid that was just like diehard fan. And just that moment of them just completely losing their shit. Right. Like when I say losing their shit, I mean, like, they don't know if there's they're a human being at that point. It's just like... <laughs> You know, like they're, yeah. they're so those those were always fun and, and definitely humbling. Like 
you know, it's it's really no big deal. I'm, of course, I'm and, a poor kid from a trailer. Like, yeah. why are you going crazy over me? Yeah, crazy, and you man. know what? And it's cool because now we kind of, kind of, we kind of get to relive a bit of that too, as well with all the convention stuff that we do, which is a yeah. lot of fun. And yeah, for sure. you know, it's always a good way, you know, just for for people to kind of like express you know, their, their adoration, you know, when people come up and go, dude, you were like such a great part of my childhood. Thank you so much. You know, when they come up and say that kind of stuff to you, you know, you, but, just, you know, you circling just, back around too, like what we were talking about, about each other, you know, there's still, you know, you go to the cons and like, mm -hmm. like, you know, with you, you know, I'm friends with you. Like, did I ever in a million years think I would be friends with the red power ranger, you know, and, it's like, it's, and vice it's, versa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really cool. It's, it's like, it's one of those things that you get like, you know, Ralph Macchio's They get, you get these guys that, you know, when I was a kid, you know, and I'm sure you were too, cause I'm sure, I don't know if you were into martial arts as much as, you know, I was into martial arts, but obviously because yeah. of the Rangers, I assumed you were. And, you know, it's like what got me started on the show. I, yeah, I, martial I, I, arts I, I, was my thing. Like I mm -hmm. took, took every martial art you could imagine. When I grew up, um, I, I used to go to the hair guy when I get my hair cut, he's like, how do you want your hair cut? And I'd always bring a different picture of Bruce Lee in <laughs> so, like this. And he it's goes, that big old shaggy bowl yeah, cut. <laughs> buzz looking box cut. But, you know, to get to meet like all your idols and people you grew up with. And, and you know, like I said, with the uh, Ralph Macchio and, and I wanted to be the karate kid and, you know, how, dude, how you're, many you're, times you're are we telling my wax off? Wax you're telling on. my story, dude. Yeah, I don't, mean, you, you don't, you, and, you probably don't know this, but you're telling my exact story, man. Yeah, no, I but, mean, that's, that's a lot of us. That's really, mm -hmm. you know, we really, I mean, I was, I was a guardian angel, you know, I don't know if you know what the guardian angels yes, are. Yes, I wow, know the guardian angels, school. man. Yeah. That is old school, dude. The I was, I was a neighborhood patrol with their berets, man. That's yep. just crazy, the dude. Berets, Curtis Sliwa. Oh wow man damn it like i was but i was into martial arts and i really you know any chance i got i wanted to learn and and really be around it i was in mma when you know it was before hoist it was like gracie. mma yeah. yeah when it was hoist gracie and ken yeah. oh yeah me too man guys, yeah you know? i remember man I was it was, nuts. It, it's so fun like i got to meet hoist gracie you yeah i've you know, lost my shit. You know, it's still yeah. well. Yeah, I've been. I'm a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu as well, and I've trained with all those guys. You know, no and, kidding. And yeah, yeah. I've been doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for like 17 years. Yeah. Damn, I want to teach me some Brazilian. Dude, absolutely, man. Yeah, Anytime, awesome. man. Absolutely. Well, you hit them up and you give them some great, some great uh, vocal yeah, notes dude. to <laughs> hit. You know, so, uh, we, we need an <laughs> intro song Trust here me, for you, the show. We don't, so we you don't have to. You, to you, do do you do not have to reciprocate by giving me any. Like, I will not. I will not. Uh, what is the word I'm looking for? I will not torture you with uh, with my singing. I promise you. But um, I was hoping that we, um, you'd come back again another time and do do sure. some more with this. Maybe next time. We'll what we could do is we'll we'll get we'll get Joey to come on with us too, and we'll just totally do it, no then, then we'll make it a big trivia. We'll do like a we'll, we'll dedicate like a whole good like ten minutes of it to like some trivia stuff. I'll, and, I'll you know kick I mean? Joey's ass at <laughs> He's on it. the he's on a show Common Knowledge too. He hosts a real game show. Yeah. And, uh, oh be, yeah, that's right. That's right. Really go crazy and do like some do some eighties trivia. He was alive in the eighties. Yeah, do some cool. 80s so, trivia, do some nineties trivia, do some. Love, yeah, exactly. That's what that's what we like. That's what we usually do is we do like yeah. general knowledge, like eighties, nineties questions yeah. on this thing. Um, but yeah, so maybe we'll, we'll reach out together. Maybe we'll reach out to Joey and uh, and uh, see if we can get him on here in another time. Uh, but everyone, uh, far, sorry about the uh, the the technical difficulties there at the end. But um, on behalf of uh, myself and uh, my co-host Alex, we really want to thank Chris for coming on, man, dude. You're a legend, bro. You're a, a fucking legend, dude. And we really oh, appreciate you, bro, you. Uh, for coming on and doing our little show like this, man. So, uh, as always, man, may the power protect you guys. And stay safe out there. Thanks a lot. Bye, guys.